It's Joe Wolzman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. This is the situation we find ourselves in today, continuing our search of the electric vehicle supply equipment market. This is Max Oak. We're gonna take you through first impressions on Max Oak, a full unbox, and you're gonna understand features and benefits by the time we're done. I've also got one toy to tease out to you that is mind-blowing. Having been a small business myself, it's my heart to support small business and businesses of the small. I'm gonna take a quick drink break. Lemonade? Yeah, I do, I got five bucks. Is that enough to buy some lemonade? <laughs> you could buy five. Yes, two bucks a cup? Two bucks a cup? Yeah. You think I could do three for five? Yep. It's a deal. I put it right there? <laughs> That's the tip box. Do I just hand it to you? Yep. Okay. Nice. Gloved hands and everything. You guys are professionals. Yeah, I sure can. I love this tablecloth. It makes it feel like summer all over again. Mmm. Thanks, guys. Fist bump. Tubes. Fist bump. No. <laughs> Shut down. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Hmm. It's a little different. All right, let's dig in. This is unique in contrast to the other EV supply equipment that we've taken a look at. It's got a four foot whip pre-terminated in the unit itself, which is not gonna work for me in this installation unless I were to install a NEMA 14, 50, 650, something of that nature. However, one place this is interesting and could be used is in a surface mount panel like this. If you had room on the adjacent wall and you could terminate that directly to a breaker, that would be a direct parts and labor savings. I like that pretty well. Check the screen for NEMA configuration guide that are typically used for EV charging. Any three prong outlet would be suitable and compatible with this unit. You'd only be required to purchase a cord end and make that up in order to plug in and energize. So it's highly adaptable and quite user friendly. I'm gonna show you the modification we're using today to make it work at our existing location. We're gonna mod this. That's what we're gonna do, we're gonna mod this. I'm gonna remove factory wiring. I don't believe this modification is going to impinge on UL listings. It's not gonna cause damage to the unit. Should be pretty friendly. I'm interested to see if Max Oak has any commentary they wanna drop in the chat. But I believe this, as an electrician, this would be a durable, safe, convenient, installation method. It's gonna minimize my parts count and the number of terminations to make for a successful charging station for the home office here. That's it, whip, gone. Step two is the size of the hole. Currently this hole is 15 sixteenths. I need to go up to one and three eighths in order to accommodate my one inch connector. So I'm gonna drill it out. That worked out pretty smoothly. Now it's down to mounting, right? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's mount that baby. Let's level it up. I'm just gonna do a little light pencil on the outside here. And one at the top. There it is. All right. I know how that rests. We can see the outline for the mounting plate. Get our elevations lined up, and that, my friends, should go right there. All right, all right, there it is. Seal the penetrations to prevent water infiltration. Boom. See if the max oak will just glide right in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Cap capture screws. This unit does not have any tamper resistance that I've noticed yet. It's just standard tooling, which is plus minus depending on your application. Very, very few of my applications require tamper resistance. They're just not 
public, you know? It's on private property, it's unlikely to be harmed by somebody with a tool set, right? <laughs> if there's vandalism, it's gonna be pretty, pretty basic routine, most likely accidental and unreported vandalism. There it is. Okay, okay. It's got a little wiggle in the final application. Be kind of nice if that just snugged up there. Gonna cap that, no stray uncapped wires. Big gray wire nut on that neutral that's pulled as a provision for future. Just sneak that in there. Yeah, right there. Out of the way. Let's get the lock nut on there. It's gonna be a pretty tight fit and it's not gonna fit. It's really not designed for one inch conduit entry. Not only did I have to drill it out, but it won't spin on there. It's not enough physical space. If my fitting hadn't been glued yet, I could have turned the fitting into the lock nut. As it is, I have to modify the lock nut by cutting the nubs off to get it on there. We can't get the lock nut on there, so we're gonna go with the recommendation provided by our cameraman, and we're gonna spin the whole unit on, and we're gonna check the mounting plate to see if we can tighten up and get rid of that rattle while we're at it. So, off it comes, kill two birds with hopefully a single stone. Okay, go ahead. There it goes, there it goes. All right, let's get it on here. It's not one challenge, it's another. Let's make our terminations, do our testing and fire it up. I'm gonna magnetize my screwdriver. There's the magnetize hole. There's the demagnetize. That's, that's how it works, it's that easy. That's gonna help me not lose terminal components as I pull it apart. I think it's because I modded it, right? So there are no torque specifications in, in the instruction manual. So we're gonna go with 22 inch pounds because that's quite reasonable. I'm not gonna say it's a standard, but it's a reasonable expectation. There it is, okay. All right, I'm gonna leave it alone. Let's energize, test. I'll show you the P2 Pro. We'll fire up the Tesla and we'll make sure everything works and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay. These EVSE are pretty smart. They've got all the safeties built into them. If something wasn't right, it would indicate that. So I don't anticipate to cover something, uncover something in my testing process that the unit itself isn't aware of. GFCI protection, overcurrent, over temperature, under this, under that. I mean, it's they're pretty loaded, so let's close it up, experiment with the cord. Actually, I really like the flexibility of this cord. You see that? It makes a nice difference when you're managing that cord to your vehicle about three times a week. I'm gonna keep that vehicle between about 40 and 80% charge, sweet spot for battery longevity and health. And I love how fine and flexible this cord is. That's a big plus for Max Oak here today. This bead right here, this waterproofing bead, really important that that's in place. It looks to be glued, quality adhesive, and that's why Max Oak has provided the tool to displace it, because it's really gonna grab and seal this up. The last thing we want is water infiltration. Let's put this cable manager on the wall. I'm of the opinion, you want to put as your sealant in every hole to prevent water infiltration. Use at least two of the three mounting holes provided. And let's test it out. Yeah, I love that flexible cord. Gosh, it's, everything's so lightweight. It's got that. That's what that does. Has a little bit of a profile all said and done out to the end of the cord loop is almost 14 inches. My indicator light is blinking green. I'm gonna use my Tesla to J1772 adapter. We're engaged. Charging air, no power. We're familiar with that message. We're gonna take our RFID card, tap it to the RFID area. 
There's a beep. Ooh, it went to red. Light went to red. I'm not gonna pretend. We had to dicker with it a little bit. Mild negotiations US to China, but it came online. It's charging now at the rate of 11 kilowatts is what the app says. Yes, we get full indication that this baby is charging that Tesla. The app setup, clunky. QR code, didn't work. RFID cards didn't quite seem to work out of the box like maybe I would have hoped. However, it's outdoor rated, it's lightweight, it's got all the safety features, it's low cost, it has a highly flexible cord, J1772 adapter, wall mount configuration with some EVSE. You've got to purchase this separately. Amazon's got some nice units, but you know what? There really should be a cable management plug holder that's integrated or supplied right out of the box. That's my opinion, and Max Oak has done that. So I want to give you a thumbs up there. For an electrical installation, so it's always good to verify your work. Two types of testing and verification that I'm going to do on this job is one, voltage check at the terminals, and two, earlier today we actually got uh, pretty deep with an infrared P2 Pro to check the temperature of the EV installation that had been running and charging at 11 and a half kilowatts for a couple of hours. Check out what we found. So excited to experience this infrared P2 Pro for the first time. This is a game changing device. Warranty manual and instructions, one indication of a great device. I'm always looking to see if it's good to go right out of the box. Here's the infrared screen protector. This is lightning. This is the Apple version. They've got an Android version. Plugs directly into your phone in either way. There it is. One little gem I'm going to show you here after a minute is the macro adapter. In addition, you don't have to carry the box. You can just carry the little bag. This is so compact. It's beautiful. This is the infrared P2 Pro and look at it. This thing is loaded with settings, Fahrenheit, Celsius, Kelvin, the suite of options goes on and on. But right now we're testing actually the EV charger. This has been running at 11.5 kilowatts. And it's really, I mean, the temperature is fantastic. Look, it gets a little toastier in there, 88. All electrical equipment has a temperature rating. That's really important when it comes down to the work. Look at that, this has been lying in the sun, peaks around 121. I like that the thermal cam is auto finding hot and cool spots as you pan. I love the fact that it's a simple plug-in device and operating on your phone for easy video capture and record for documentation purposes. Customers are going to often want that if there's an issue that's been identified and they're not on site. So this is, this is great, 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Most temperature limitations of terminals are 75 degrees C, 167 Fahrenheit. Those are well under temp, which means that they're operating properly. And then most wire is gonna be 90 degrees C. I think that's 184, 194 Fahrenheit. So that's, this, this looks good. You, you see that even the high temp locations, 120, 121, no problem for 11 and a half kilowatts. Yeah, this is good, this is good. I got no issues. It's been turning 11 and a half kilowatts for an hour in the summer sun. Perfect. Transition to micro. I'm gonna show you one little fantastic feature this thing has. It's got a macro lens. The macro lens looks like this. It's a magnetic device, there's the magnet. Snaps right onto the camera Boom, falls into place, only fits in one direction. And now we're out of focus, you can see that. But there's our cameraman. He's gonna hold still and I'm gonna zoom in. And whoa! <laughs> Man, that's impressive. You can get some detail capture. Now as an electrician, I'm not sure this is entirely important to me because typically I'm not working on circuit boards, microchips. But if I were, look at that level of detail. Look at that capture, that's, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive, that's that little component right there. I'm gonna pull off the macro lens. 
and I'll show you the same component. See it blurs out. Now, in my opinion, this infrared P2 Pro, for its portability, user friendliness, suite of options, man, it's capture, record, ability, native to the phone. It's beautiful. This is the best, this is the best infrared cam I've used. No exaggeration, hands down. Klein, I'm sorry, you're not even a, com a contender right now. I've got a Klein. The one category I'll give the Klein points and perks is that rugged, rugged exterior, period, and a story, that's it. Otherwise, this is game changer. This is amazing. One of my gigs is that I want, no, I'm not as consistent as I'd like to be, full admission, but I'd like to thermal cam every single electrical panel I touch because it's so informative. Temperature is critical when it comes to electrical performance and safety. The kids are doing more business over there than we are. They got a Subaru, they got a pickup, the lady walking away with four cups, and here we are doing electric vehicle supply equipment. However, I do believe as an electrical contractor, this is a massive revenue stream the electrification of America as it pertains to the residential home, it's huge, it's huge. We do as many as 10 EVSC units per week at times. It's a big and ever-growing market. There are hundreds of millions of vehicles to electrify and Max Oak is gonna have a place in that market. It was a little weird getting it to connect with the app, the RFID cards, and to the car originally, but once connected, it's operating and I'm able to control the flow of energy from the EV app like I always do because it's native to the vehicle. I can stop, I can schedule, I can start. It's all good. I wanna thank Max Oak for sponsoring this video. Appreciate you guys. And as always, products and tools from our videos can be found linked in the description. And subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.